Hi, folks. I'm sorry about that interruption. You know, technology sometimes bites. Um, thanks for tuning in to this year's first ever virtual sweet corn festival. This is the second day of it. And my name is Scott Schwartz, and I am the director of the Sousa Archives and Center for American Music. We're one of the sponsors of this wonderful festival that goes on every year. We are so happy that this festival is this year free of charge and you can watch as much and as long as you would like and it doesn't cost you a penny. But you know, if you're thinking we really should donate to this wonderful program, then you should consider making a small gift. Um, you can pay by PayPal, on Venmo, or Mela. You've got a QR code right on your screen, so if you've got one of those smartphones, you just point to that QR code and click away, and it goes from there. I just happen to have a dumb phone, so I'll just have to hand somebody some cash. But, you know, we've had a great show. Robin was super, and now we're going to start out with a program of Little Miss Anne. She was a school teacher in Chicago, and just a wonderful musician, and she just creates super stuff for children, in fact, children of all ages. So if you love music and are just dying for some fun time, then please pay attention to Miss Anne, please. Hello, welcome. I'm so happy to be here. My name is Little Miss Ann. I'm going to start with a song called Good Morning. Good morning. Can you hear the rooster crowing? Good morning. Can you smell the scones are baking? Good morning. Can you feel the sun is shining? La 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 la. La 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 la. La 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 la. La 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 Hey 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 Good morning I can feel my love is growing Good morning I can feel your love is growing. Good morning. Can you feel our love is growing? La 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 la. La 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 la. La 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 la. La 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 Hey 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 All right, well thank you so much for joining me today and thank you to Champagne Urbana Folk and Roots Fest. I'm gonna bring my husband Patrick to come play, join me on the drums for the other songs. And it's so great to see you. We're gonna do a song called Upe. Here he is, Patrick. And this song is about a purple yam, and there's dance movements. Ube, ube, this is the fist pump. This is called the arm pump. <laughs> when I sing ube, 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 and ube is about a purple yam, which is used in desserts um, in Filipino cooking. So this is the fist pump. You got it, you got it. And then this is called the wall wash. When I think, sing the lalas, you go like this, la, la. Yeah, la, la, it's all right. And when I say, do you like, Green eggs and ham. We say no. Can you practice it, Patrick? Ready? Do you like green eggs and ham? No. no. Or do you like a purple yam? A purple yeah. Yes. And then the last part is we twinkle our fingers. And when I say shine, we bring it down as slowly 
as, what's the slowest animal on the earth? Sloth? Yeah? Okay. Or turtle? Or snail? Okay. One of those. Ready? Shine. Bring it down slowly. That's the whole song, Patrick. Right there. You ready? I, I am. Okay. Here we go. the 606 yes you have well it's i'm gonna show you six can you do this six oh six it's a trail in chicago that people used to run ride their bikes it used to be an abandoned railroad track and about four or five years ago they made it into the 606 an elevated trail that goes through four neighborhoods and we're gonna do a song called The 606. And when I say 606, we go 606. When I say rolling, we roll. This part's a little silly. When I say east, we point east. You can ask a grown up. When I say west, point west, west and east. Hmm, I think that's it for now. We just do that. All right, let's try it. 606 and rolling. Are you ready? I'm ready.
Neighbors in Chicago, you ready? It goes Logan Square, it goes Humboldt Park, and it's called the Six. the 606 one day in Chicago. Here in Chicago, kind of like Champaign-Urbana. Yeah. I love coming to Champaign-Urbana. Thank you so much to Champaign-Urbana Folk and Roots Fest for having Patrick and I. This song is about love and hope, friendship, family, being grateful for all those things and good health, of course. Let's put our hands It's called Follow Me. It's one of off of my five albums, and this is from my fourth album called Follow Me.
fun song to play. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me today. It's been so much fun. Well, I hope to get back to Champaign-Urbana sometime. I love coming out there. I think this is the third or fourth time I've played for the champaign Folk and Roots Fest. Champaign-Urbana, sorry. And this is a song by Tom Petty. Called Wildflowers. You belong among the wildflowers. You belong in a boat out at sea. Sail away, kill off the hours. You belong somewhere you'll feel free. such a wonderful set you played for us. Thank you. Hope you guys really enjoyed it. Welcome to the festival. Folks, all of this sponsored by the City of Urbana's Arts and Culture Program, Cinema Gallery, a wonderful place, Common Ground Foods Co-op, um, the First Federal Bank, and Page. Great Folk and Roots Festival, and I hope you really enjoyed it. Miss Ann's stuff can be found on her website, Little Miss Ann, all one word, littlemissann.com. So if you're looking for a little follow me, counting by five, stand up, or can you make a circle, then check out Miss Ann's website. We've got another wonderful group coming up on Dewclaw and Bones Jugs, I tell you. Cody Jensen and Charlie Harris are a crazy lot, and they brought along a little beauty today with Liz Fairman and Dewclaw. So if you're looking for just lots of crazy fun with xylophone, I tell you, banjos, and quite frankly, kazoos and other noisemakers, then you've got yourself one heck of a time. You won't be able to keep your feet still for a second. I know it. So, folks... 
Get ready to have a rollicking good time with Duke Claw and Bones Jocks. <laughs> Welcome, everybody, and thanks for tuning in. We're going to start today's set with a little breathing together. So if you're ready at home, we're going to take a quick little moment and breathe together with a big inhale and a big exhale. And Charlie and Cody are going to help me with that now. Okay, so ready? Exhale everything out. And we're going to inhale. And hold. Exhale everything out. All right, let's try it again. We're warmed up now. Big inhale. All right, everybody, and hold it just for a sec. And exhale everything out. All right, last time, all together now. You've got it. Inhale. And exhale like the winds on the plains. All right. Thanks, guys, for your help with that one. We're going to start with this little light of mine. You might know it. Two, oh, one, two, three, four. <laughs>
tell your lights are shining so bright at home there, folks. Thanks so much for listening and being here with us today. This next song we're going to do is about a number, and it's one I, I like a lot. I like to count it when I'm out and about. Um, you might like it, too. Maybe it's a lucky number for you, or maybe it makes you think of something good. I'll tell you about it. We're going to do a little math during this one, too. Don't be intimidated by it. You may already know these numbers, or uh, you might be learning them soon. backwards from 3 times 10. 3 times 10 is 30. 3 times 9 is 27. 3 times 8 is 24. 3 times 7 is 21. 3 times 6 is 18. 3 times 5 is 15. 3 times 4 is 12. And 3 times 3 is 9. And 3 times 2 is 6. And 3 times 1. You probably know that one. Well, that's a magic. Multiplication there. Let's give it up for number three. Number three. It's one I like. Hey, we got three people on three stage here. Up. More if you count my puppets, but that would be a different song, wouldn't it now? All right. This next one we're going to sing is about a fine, fierce lady 
and a, a landscape that she's coming around. <laughs> I lied, folks. We're singing a song about one of your favorite dishes and mine. It's about spaghetti. <laughs> spaghetti. Now, if you're not a fan of spaghetti, I bet you could insert your own favorite food into the, this song. All right? Here we go. of spaghetti all covered with cheese I lost my poor meatball when somebody sneezed Achoo! it rolled off the table and onto the floor I lost my poor was so tasty as tasty could be and then the next summer it grew into a tree tale about sneezing while eating. Make sure you sneeze into your elbow, kids. <laughs> <laughs> One, two, three.
coming round the mountain when she comes. She'll be coming round the mountain when she comes. She'll be coming round the mountain. She'll be coming round the mountain. She'll be coming round the mountain. Sing it, baby! When she Jugs. Cody and Charlie really are helping me have a good time up here today. All right, folks, this next one I bet you know. It's about <laughs> rowing in your boat, and we're going to do it a special kind of way. These guys aren't going to play their instruments, and when we do that, it's called singing a cappella. So we're just going to use our voices to make this whole song work. Now, we're going to also sing it in a round, which means I'm going to start singing, and then someone else is going to come in, and then someone else is going to come in, so we're going to build on the song together. All right? You guys ready? Yeah, I was wanting to go Which to Which one Acapulco. of us comes in first? I don't know. You guys might have to flip a coin. Okay. Who's older? Charlie. Charlie can go first and then Cody. Ah. <laughs> but we'll switch it up next time so it's fair. All right? Ready? Row, 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 row your boat. Row. Merrily, 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 life is but a dream. Row, 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 row your row, boat row, gently row, down row. the stream. Merrily, 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 life is but a dream. Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 life is but a dream. Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 life is but a dream. Great job, everybody. I hope you rode your boat with your life vest on, that is, of course. All right, we're going to do one more for you now. And this one you probably know, too. It's called When the Saints Go Marching In.
Hashem. All right, folks, that's it for us. Thanks so much for joining us this morning. I hope you enjoy the rest of the festival. Hey, that was a ton of fun. Oh, when the saints. Oh, wait, I should be talking instead of singing. I tell you, they kept my feet dancing something fierce. I tell you, all of this brought to you essentially by Record Swap, the Upper Bout, the Urbana Country Dancers, and Ruth Ann Wyman Law Office. I tell you, these folks help us out. And quite frankly, if you visit these Sponsors, please tell them you heard about them through us at the Folk. We. Now, I tell you, we've listened to great music um, by Bones Jugs and Duke Claw, and we really have to thank Liz, Cody, and Charlie for a great show, Down Home Fun. But, you know, we aren't done with this Down Home Fun stuff, kids. I tell you, we've got the Dill Pickle Project, and actually, it's the Ride Dill Pickle Project. These crazy cats play everything out of the sun, from washboards to the kitchen sink. Think of this group as a part jug band with silly hokum and honky tonk spice mixed in. Now you might be asking, what powers this fanciful bubbling band of happy folks? Well, I tell you, that's easy. They call it pickle power the type of fun, the magical power that makes your parents chuckle and you young folks roar with laughter. It's just plain silliness and you can't stop your feet from dancing. So I tell you, sit back, rest those feet for just a moment because we're gonna be dancing and having a grand time. You heard me folks, let's bring on Dill Fried Pickle Project. See you folk and roots fest i'm a1 salvage from the deep fried pickle project and we are happy to be joining you and i guess without further ado we're gonna start yes we are so happy to see you at the folk and roots festival yeah don't right. worry everybody there's more where that came from <laughs> daniel's full of them <laughs> <Woo -hoo! laughs> we got a part for you in this song when we say you can pour it on your sister we need you to scream. You can pour it on your sister. Ah! That was well done. When we say you can put it on a blister, we need you to say, ooh. ooh. You can put it on a blister. Ooh. ooh. All right, I think you're ready. Don't worry, I'll help you out. <laughs> Please, little gherkin, remember what we said. Don't drink the juice at the bottom of the pickle jar. You might grow green and bumpy and forget who you are. You pour it on your sister. Ah! Put it on a blister. Woo! But let me tell you, mister, never drink the juice at the bottom of the pickle jar. Yes, it may be cloudy with lots of spices. It may be yellow and it may have some seeds But believe me, kids, it's not what you tell me need. Don't drink the juice at the bottom of the pickle jar You might grow green and bumpy and forget who you are You can pour it down a well, 
make it show and tell. But don't forget to yell. Ah! Never take the juice at the bottom of the pickle jar. You can hear that pop when you open the top. But as you bring that jar to your lip, your stomach screams. joining us. We are happy to be here I with you. I almost hear it. Yeah. Mm. Ooh, look at that. How did that happen? Well, well, got to. you know, we like sleeping in beds. We like sleeping in tents. It's intense, though, when you sleep in a tent. And what is this? We song? like cots. The tent, Daniel. Was that we the like cots? Joke? Because wherever you go, you're probably going to be sleeping in a bed. Not in a tent. In a tent, you have alternative beds. Yes. I, I want to see this tent that you're sleeping in that has a full bed in it. Well, you, you should see it. It's amazing. That's called glamping. Right. Yes. You can sleep in a camper. Some campers have beds. But that's not a tent. That's not a tent. Yeah. But sometimes. Sometimes. Just sometimes? Sometimes. Maybe in Daniel's head. When you go over to somebody's house... Maybe a relative, or maybe when you're at a hotel, you gotta sleep in a certain kind of bed. And a it hotel has hotel bed. That's right. A and nice sometimes, big hotel bed. Yes, but sometimes, when you're the kid, especially, you have to sleep in a bed with a crossbar on it, called a folding bed. Who out there has ever slept in a folding bed? Raise your hand if you've ever slept in a folding bed. Folding? Oh, yeah. The bed uh -huh. just folds I up. I so. Like an Hopefully origami not sculpture. With you in it. No, don't fold the bed up with you inside. That would be bad. It's like a futon. Yeah. Except worse. Except worse. <laughs> anyway, we're going to sing this old Whistler's Jug Band tune about a folding bed. And I'm going to try playing the nose whistle. Alan, did you say futons? I love futons on my salad. Mmm, crumble up some futons, put them on my salad. That's good stuff. Yeah. Nose whistle, Daniel. Okay. I'm gonna play the nose whistle. Okay, play that nose is, whistle. This is a Whistler's Jug Band tune. <laughs> All right. That's actually true. All right. All right. Two, three, four. <laughs> Get on out of that falling bed. Else I'm gonna tear. 
before you was fast asleep. Get on out of that folding down. Else I'm gonna tear it down. Oh, tear it down. From the wall. Tear it down. Search it all. Tear it down. Give me this wall. Got my feet in the kitchen and my head in the hall. Get on out of that Uh -huh. Two young gals I chanced to Is meet. that right? One had a nickel, the other a dime. Says them all, King Griggle, let's have a good time. Get on out of that folding bed. Else is gonna tear it down. Yeah, get on out, out of that folding bed. Else I'm, I'm gonna, gonna tear it down. Woo! Oh, thanks, everybody. That one featured Alan Selvage on the canjo. The canjo, it's a lot like a banjo, but it is a can. <gasps> Ooh. Got and it. genuine fork tail piece. You can put your cookies in it. You can. And then over there, Catherine was playing the cigar box fiddle made out of an old cigar box. Cigars not included. And this thing, if you have any dirty laundry, you can. Wash your laundry on it. It's a washboard. Now, Daniel's uh, musical ensemble is all matching. He's got his wash tub and his wash board. board. And he can, you know, he's the dirtiest member of the band. I am the dirtiest. So, it's helpful. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. Kind of like Pigpen. He's always clean. Well, here, our next tune, uh, we wrote back in uh, 1977. Ooh, that's a long time yeah. ago, Daniel. I feel like I was only two years old. You were, like but I you were a prolific writer. He started writing songs at a young age. Well, this one's about a fella named Lucius T. Skywalker. He used to sit around the campfire, make a big tire fire, and tell us all stories about his exploits long ago and far, far away. He put some womp rats on the spit, Roast them up. We'd have us some barbecued womp rat. Mm. Ooh, and pork. Mm -hmm. Some pork. Mm. Yeah, good old mm. oh, pork. Pork, man. Tender. <laughs> it's, it's a tender meat. <laughs> There's a lot of them. All right. All right. Well, here's a little tune we wrote back in 1977. And then they made a movie out of it. <gasps> That's not it. That's, there it is. Yep, it was, wasn't it? It's so nice. All right, let's try it again. Yeah, it's not it. Yeah, it's not it. Yeah, it. Well, I wish that I was on old Tatooine down by the old salt flats. I like salt. Ain't no track. Just one job of the hut. Mm, so low. Never had me no girl on Tatooine till I saw her hologram. Yeah. Well, you oughta shoulda known that she was trouble, but she she made me feel like such a man. You're my only hope. Tatooine, you'll always be home sweet home to me. Tattooing by the new sea. I'm tattooing by the new sea. Well, once I met a stranger on old Tattooing. I was looking for this feller named Opie. Opie? Yeah. He fought off some raiders. Talking about this guy named Vader. I sure miss that Opie. Hey, Daniel. Yeah. Um, um, it wasn't Opie. Opie? Opie. 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 I feel like Opie. Opie. that was a different Opie. state and a different Opie. story. Yeah, Opie. Opie. That's something else. Yeah. Opie Wan Kenopi. Oh. Oh, yeah. That was him. Uh -huh. Little red haired boy. Uh -huh. Well, we loaded up the speeder and headed down 
throat worth that hydroponic moisture farm. <laughs> I said you ought to be knowing what my Uncle Owen's growing. Oh, yeah. He said, heck yeah. It's shucky darn. It's organic. Tatooine, you'll always be home sweet home to me. Good old Tatooine on Tatooine by the dew sea. <laughs> Tatooine by the dew Oh yeah, Catherine, that was Ooh. nice. Aww. The horse was with her. The dogs didn't come out though. Aww. They just they just asleep down there. I see them. Hey guys, I've been working on this thing. Yeah. Okay. Here, yeah, follow me. <laughs> Well, about a mile from home, we saw the smoke. Hope said, smells like Jamaican barbecue. Misa like barbecue. I know you do, Georgia. We arrived at the farm to find the whole crop was torched and my uncle Owen and Aunt Beru too. Pass the Beru three four. <laughs> the rest of my story is quite a blur wherever that I may roam. Use the force. Accidentally kissed my sister, fought my daddy on the Death Star. I just want to go home. Light speed, chewy tattooing, you'll always be home sweet home to me. Good old tattooing, on tattooing by the dew sea. Tattooing by the dew sea. Oh, genie. Tattooing by the dew sea. All right. Mm. And the crowd yes. Goes wild. So Thank you all so much. Oh, it's all good. Speaking of creatures, <clears throat> did you say preachers, Daniel? Preachers? preachers. Speaking of creatures. Oh. Creatures. Oh man, I'm not Our, our creatures are going to be pre. Our creatures are going to preach right now. All right. Oh, preach man. it, creatures. I don't Who's know what's going on. the son of a creature, man? <laughs> <laughs> I think I have a new song to work on now for Halloween. The <laughs> only thing he could ever teach me <laughs> it was the son of a creature, man. Yeah. I said bow. Oh, yeah, man. Wow. <laughs> Moo, oink. <laughs> well, all right. Ah! <laughs> 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 
We know you're speechless. Speechless out there. It's okay. Hey, All give right. him give him a bow. Give him a <clears> bow, <throat> creatures. We already did. You missed it. You missed it, man. Oh, yeah. They're a little late. Better late than never. <laughs> Well, hey there. We know all this music is probably making you hungry. So uh, we figured we'd sing a song about snack food. Oh, yeah. Nature's snack food. You can just go outside and find it if you got a patch of grass or... Tomatoes? A bait store or... Well, they... You know. Um, the, the <clears throat> tomatoes. Oh, it'd be good with tomatoes on a sandwich. Mmm. <laughs> you know, I've never had that, Daniel. I, oh. I can't say. It sounds wonderful and crispy. It does? Fry them up, fry them up like bacon. You're gonna fry them up like bacon. I might go down to the fishing store and get me some. Well. well. Hey, uh, we do have a part for you on this. All of you out there, and uh, any of you who who made kazoos beforehand or might have a kazoo around, we'll have a section for you too. Mm. So prepare your kazoo. Ooh. Prepare your kazoo. Pickle friend. And we have a part. Want to teach him part, Alan? Well, hold on. I think we better introduce ourselves. We oh, might have yeah. forgotten to do that earlier. Oh. I'm A1 Salvage. Hey, everybody. Hi. Um, <laughs> I was saying hi to you. I, I, know, I, know, I, know, I know you. <laughs> hi. All right, over here to my left, my for, oh, your right side, my forgetful friend, this is Mr. Daniel Boone Daniel. Hi. And uh, to your left, my right, this is Miss Ooh. Catherine Diana. Hi. Hi. And we are the Deep Fried Pickle Project. Our friend Charlie is off somewhere in the mountains, I think. Uh-huh. He's uh, searching for Bigfoot. No, he kind of is Bigfoot. Oh, that's true. He can't search his for himself. His lost shaker of salt? Yeah, his lost shaker of salt. That's okay. what he's looking for. <laughs> and unicorns. Charlie's out searching for unicorns. Ah. You know, that makes sense. All right, here we go. Three, two, one. <laughs> Nobody likes me, everybody hates me, think I'll go eat worms. Worms! Long, slim, slimy one! Big, fat, juicy one! Itsy, bitsy, fuzzy, wuzzy worms. First you get a bucket, then you get a shovel, look how they wiggle and squirm. Squirm! Long, slim, slimy one! Big, fat, juicy one! Itsy, bitsy, fuzzy, wuzzy worms. You bite the heads off, then you suck the guts out. Ooh, how your stomach will turn. Uh oh! Long, slim, slimy one. Big, fat, juicy one. Itsy, bitsy, fuzzy, wuzzy worms. Oh, yeah! Long, slim, slimy ones. Big, fat, juicy ones. You know, they slip down easily, the big, fat, fuzzy ones don't. Nope. The big, fat, fuzzy ones, they stick in your teeth, and the juice goes slurping down your throat. Nobody likes me, everybody hates me, think I'll go eat worms. Worms! Long, slim, slimy ones! Big, fat, juicy ones! It's a bitsy, fuzzy, wuzzy worms. Thank you. See you, Folk and Roots Yay. Fest. We're the Deep Fried Pickle Project. We've had such a good time. Thank you all. Hope to see you soon. Thanks for spending all the right. time with us. Take care. Okay, and doesn't that make you want to go out and find a few fat, juicy worms? Ugh. I hope your kids are having a good time this morning. This is Kathy Spiegel, and I'm a member of the Folk and Roots Festival Steering Committee. Welcome. Welcome. Glad to have you here. Next, we're going to hear the Black Banjo Reclamation Project, which features Hannah Mae Ree and Seymour Love, who is a cultural and land-based revival project that centers the black community by reclaiming ancestral wisdom and moving forward with innovations through perspectives of Afrofuturism. I had a chance to watch both of the uh, pr presentations last night on this reclamation project. It is a huge effort that they are doing. We're so happy to have you with us this morning. We are offering this whole event uh, online for those of you that have Facebook or if you're looking at it on our page, our webpage. 
and your kids are welcome to join in, but there's just wonderful music all day long today and lots of information. I want to thank some of our sponsors this morning for their uh, help with this. The City of Urbana Arts and Culture Program, they've been behind us from the very beginning and this has been a wonderful effort for the last 12 years. And the Sousa Archives at the University of Illinois. Now you may wonder why, but uh, Scott, who works with the Sousa, gives us that money to help us present things to the children in this community so that the people in Champaign-Urbana can enjoy this with their families. And this has been a, a real godsend for us. Some of the other sponsors are Busey Bank, Cinema Gallery, Common Ground Root Food Co-op, First Federal Bank, and Page Roasting Company. Also the Music Shop, the Record Swap, the Upper Bout, Urbana Country Dancers, and Ruth Wyman Law Office. If you go into any of those businesses or you know any of the people who work or own those businesses, please let them know how much we appreciate their support. Without them, this would not happen every year, and it's been an extremely interesting uh, way to do this this year. So lots of people are involved, lots of equipment, lots of uh, entertainers that are sending stuff in so that you can see a good program virtually. Hello, I'm Seymour Love, presenting for you on behalf of the Black Banjo Reclamation Project. I'm an educator, historian, musician. You can follow me on Instagram, Seymour Love, S-E-E-M-O-R-E -E, space love, L-O-V-E. -E. Follow Black Banjo Reclamation Project. Black Banjo Reclamation Project. Also, Hannah Marie. Shout outs to Reverse the Diaspora as well. Also, want to take a moment to acknowledge, recognize, and pay respects to the land we're standing on and the people whose land we're standing on. The indigenous folks that were here before and that are still here. Taking a breath to connect with our ancestors. All right, let's get to it. We got work to do. My presentation is on how music theory, ethnomusicology, and music education promotes and perpetuates systems of white supremacy within a white racial framework. I realize that white, the term white supremacy may be triggering to some, however it is what it is. Music is language. Music is a way of expressing the experiences of the human condition. Music, like a language, is not universal. It's cultural. Again, music is not universal. It's cultural and particular to the people in which the music comes from, as it is a reflection of the culture's values in addition to being an expression of the experiences unique to the people from which the music comes. Through my years as a musician, educator, historian, and a lifetime of being black, I found music education in institutionalized systems, along with music theory and the disciplines of ethnomusicology to be perpetuates of a white racial framework. That is to say, I have in more cases than not found these areas to be standalone promoters of this white racial framework even if the educators themselves do not identify as white supremacists or knowingly align themselves with the ideologies, ignorance will not change the structure that supports the white racial frame within a culture that has systematically established certain ways of life, thinking, and behaving that never have to be challenged by the privileged individuals who benefit from it. It's up to all of us to actively and sincerely work to change this white racial frame. Eduardo Bonilla Silva 
defines racial structure as the totality of social relations and practices that reinforce white privilege. Dr. Danielle Brown addresses ethnomusicology at its framework by stating an organization whose predominantly white members by and large research people of color is and can be nothing other than a colonial and imperialistic enterprise. There is an ever-growing problem within the world of folk, country, blues, bluegrass, and old time when it comes to ethnomusicology, education, and music theory. Tradition within these styles are being primarily taught by white folks when they have not at all come from white folks. On the contrary, they are built and continue to be built upon black folks, but to no or very little representation. This is not due to a lack of interest in the ability of black folks eager to address the topics, but due in large part to a systematically white racial structure when it comes to things regarding the Western civilization. Most ethnomusicology scholars are required to fulfill the requirements of a proper Western music indoctrination before gaining the esteemed title of ethnomusicologist. You have to jump through some hoops before you get to ethnomusicology. This means they must study music before they can study ethnomusic. This practice promotes separate thought and opinion on musical cultures other than what is white. Before a black student may study music of their own culture, they have to prove they first know what music is. That can be a problem. Outside the numerical analysis of sound moving through time and space, Western music theory can also be viewed as a racial ideology which implicitly denies that other cultures could have a rich musical tradition as well as a rich musical theoretical tradition. The Western music theory I'm in reference to in regards to music analysis systems in the West refers to the aesthetics of the harmonic styles of predominantly white male from Europe of the 18th century. Although the numerical analysis of sound moving through space and time in the Western culture is much older than the 18th century, and in point of fact, the Greeks and Romans learned to count and receive their numerical systems from Africans, does not change the point that in the West, the, primary, the primarily ascribed aesthetics of music that are used today are based on the preferences of these white men of the 18th century found in Europe. It's problematic when these preferences, a lot based on cultural and racial bias, are superimposed upon other styles and cultural expressions. Music theory not only compares all other forms of music to this narrow perspective of 18th century harmonic style and preference, but then looks to force its aesthetic values onto other cultures and musical styles that may be vastly different and in which Western music theory is not adequately equipped to analyze in the first place. Hence the aspects of banjo music and ethnomusicology and where there can be problems within that. The fact that institutionalized educational practices and the like in regards to music education has not changed in over a hundred years is a sign of not only comfort in this white racial structure but also a sign of academic laziness clinging on to desperately outdated knowledge that has already been known is the show of ignorant cowards avoiding to do the real work of becoming familiar with the unknown or the new. In the realm of folk, old time, country, bluegrass, and blues, which there are so many more, ethnomusicology and tokenized scholarship seem very reluctant to just get out of the way and allow the story of black folks to be told by black folks. This country, is very, this country has been very resistant and reluctant to providing equity to African folks when it comes to increasing the numbers of black and indigenous educators in the classroom, in learning spaces wherever they may be, and in the field of ethnomusicology, especially when it comes to the music of the banjo. The banjo has 
customarily been viewed as a nationally identifying piece for American music. Some ethnomusicologists really believe that through imitation of a culture, it brings a total understanding of the culture. Perhaps not all musicologists share this sentiment, but what is perpetuated in the realm of banjo music and all that comes from its cultural appropriation is misrepresentation of culture, language, traditions, and the overall story of black people. Cultural appropriation is the unacknowledged or inappropriate adopting of the customs, practices, ideas, etc. of a people or society by members of another people or society and typically a group more privileged due in part to oppression. Whereas there are many who may be familiar with some of these terms, these matters really need to be understood beyond an intellectual frame. This is not philosophy. People of color must tell their own story within the framework of ethnomusicology, music theory, and music education. The detriment of white folk dominating the narrative of black folks in folk music, old time, blues, country, jazz, and many other styles, will always, as it has, lead to supporting ideologies of white supremacy and perpetuate inequalities in education, accessibility to resources, housing, police brutality, and healthcare, just to name a few. We have to, we have, to have diversity, inclusion, and equity in the story of humanity's progress. And that won't happen if only one group is narrating for the rest of the world. Banjo culture is being gatekept, which what that means is that the access to banjos and all that have to do with the culture, i.e. instruments, clothes, drums, land, and other things expressing African culture and the things significant to it are limited to the in-groups to appropriate the perceived traditions of these systematically oppressed and the marginalized African people. Treating black people and their African musical tradition as unimportant until it is recognized as valuable and useful by the oppressing culture of a white racial framework is an example of that framework in action by means of legitimizing another culture. Um, a working example of this would be when Bela Fleck went to Africa to legitimize the banjo. Now I will say that Bela is a pretty nice individual as I've had the opportunity to speak with him briefly on banjos a couple of times now, it doesn't change what he upheld, even in ignorance. When asked why he was in Africa by a reporter, he started out great, but still crashed the plane. I mean, he just like fell short. This is what he stated. My thought was I want people to realize where the banjo comes from because it's been associated with a white Southern stereotype. A lot of people in the U.S. don't realize that the banjo is an African instrument. One way to really illustrate would be to take the banjo back to Africa and research some of the roots, but also just to play with great African musicians and find a role for the banjo in their culture." End quote. I'm going to say that last sentence again. That's where, he, that's where he killed it. He said, to find a role for the banjo in their culture. The banjos from Africa. The banjo still played in Africa. He also named the documentary describing his travels to Africa after an extremely graphic story a local African man in a village told him about describing the slave ships abducting Africans from a port. Um, Bela Fleck did request to see where the slaves were taken. The phrase the African people would say to describe the place where so much tragedy took place was translated in English to throw down your heart. I found it very inappropriate to... So this translation of throw down your heart was what Bela named the movie. 
and I found it very inappropriate title after hearing the reference explained in the movie. I'm sure Bela's heart was in the right place, but it was in the right place for this white racial framework. And it supported a white racial framework. It was a story of a white man legitimizing the banjo in its homeland of Africa for white people. I feel like that movie could have done more to affirm black life in Africa and in America. Moving on, a quote from Dr. Danielle Brown, 2020, one in which I feel addresses the work of white ethnomusicologists states, quote, if you cannot do the basic of things like acknowledge the existence of the people whose lives and cultures your job is based on, you have no right to make your living off of them, end quote. Music is a language. Music is a way of expressing the experiences of the human condition. Music, like a language, is not universal. It's cultural. The culture, banjo culture, comes from black people. And without the people, you have tools devoid of spirit and imitation with no life. I'm not against white folks telling the stories of black people, rather just the opposite. There needs to be more talk of the importance of black lives and the affirmation of black lives in white spaces and amongst white folks. It's how these stories are being told and why the stories are being told that need to be understood and directed in a manner that uplifts, supports, and affirms black life. The environments that create the space for music education, music theory, and ethnomusicology have to be places that not only encourage diversity, but actively create it again and again and again and again without fail. In August of 2020, Philip Yule, a professor at Hunter College in New York and a black person, was a key speaker for the meeting of the Society of Music Theory their presentation was titled, Music Theory's White Racial Frame. It was well informative, very informative, clear and precise. Explaining aspects of music theory and academia and how continuing to only teach music and music theory from a very white perspective is supporting a white racial frame. Simple. They then provide the example of Henry Schanker and how this very pro-Nazi German individuals music theory and social philosophy are one and the same and that they support sexist racist and aggression towards all people not german and that the academic world of the west can do better in actually doing the work to diversify the educational environments by introducing more women and people of color into the core course material you will recognize the problem and offered a wonderful solution and received a lot of negative backlash from peers who disagreed with the presentation. A lot of peers secretly wrote articles about Ewell that were poorly written, disrespectful, and used tactics to silence an individual speaking out against this white racial frame. Professor Ewell was encouraged and he was courageous in speaking out against this frame with scholarly attention self-determination, care, and love, showing the understanding of diversity, inclusion, and equity in more than just an intellectual framework, but also in action. Black lives matter to American culture because black life is American culture. Thank you. That was a really nice thought to leave us with, and I think many of us probably didn't know the origin of the banjo or where banjo music has come from, so I really congratulate these folks who are doing the research. This is Kathy from the Festival Steering Committee, and I want you to know that we're extremely happy to be able to bring you this virtual festival at no cost to you directly. Usually we sell wristbands, but if you're able, you can help us to continue to make our events possible through the year because we not just don't just do this, we do other events other places here in Urbana. 
So if you look out your screen, you'll see a little barcode. All you have to do is point your camera to that and you can make a donation. You can also do PayPal, which is pretty easy, or Venmo. And uh, we appreciate, even if it's a small donation, because it all adds up if you think about how many people are actually watching us today. We have several partners that make this possible for us to be here today. So some of our festival partners are Backland Radio, which has been advertising for us for several years now, and they do advertisements all year long. The Community Center for the Arts, which has been one of our venues, plus they also provide activities for children. Dixon Graphics, which has been a wonderful donor to us for a lot of our, our print needs. The Iron Post, which I, last night, kicked off the festival with a presentation from there. The Rose Bowl, where I'm sitting right now, even though you can't come inside, you can come to the back door, but they have multitudes of equipment up here and they're making this festival possible today. And TechLine, which has been a long-standing uh, sponsor for us, our partner. Robert E. Brown for World Music, which is a University of Illinois organization, the Urbana Free Library. And if you've been by the library, you should see our, our uh, display there. It's really nice. And Weiss Camp Screen Printing, which has given us these beautiful shirts, which you can see our logo. Next up is going to be Millie Raccoon. She is a performer that's based in New Orleans. She sings original songs um, inspired by country music, bluegrass, and jazz. Now, you can't be in New Orleans right now, but as you watch Millie, you will sort of be in New Orleans because she's bringing her music to you here. And this is one thing that we can do with these virtual festivals is bring you music from all over the United States. These performers have agreed to perform for you last night. Watch Dom Clemens play, obviously, in his backyard, and it was nice and green with the goldenrod and the hostas blooming. So uh, right now, coming up for you is Millie Raccoon.
Lily U Folk and Roots Festival. I'm Lily Raccoon and this is Frank Rishi on the guitars and we're doing some of my original songs for you. This next one is called Pinch Hitter Blues. It's about baseball. Chasing your dragons in your field of dreams You say that you love me, but what can you mean? I'm not a dragon, I'm a real human being Am I your star player or just part of a team? I'm your third base lover, don't take me home You run me around, leave me alone Man out of left field, I'm just alone though The bases are loaded, but you won't take me Signals that your catcher makes don't match the path the pitches take, and I don't want to sit and wait for you to bring me up to the plate. sadder songs and it's called Happy Forever. This is uh, pretty nice out. Pretty nice out here. Yeah, we're coming to you from Nashville, Tennessee, right now, where it's a very lovely, hot, sunny day. And I hope to someday get up to Champaign Urbana, as was planned, to play this festival in person. But for now, I'll do a song about traveling too much. You can hold me 
Next one is a weird little song called Secret Dragon. Unlike my other public dragon song. One, two, one, two, three, four. Fine art of taking it slow.
do one of my oldest songs that I still do about the first time I tried to move to Nashville. Thank you to Frank Rishi for playing guitar yeah. and Logan Ledger for filming us. And Georgia. The for, mystery man. The, the Georgia, Georgia for the dog. hanging out with us. You maybe Can't have see seen her, a beautiful little dog wander through. She's our mascot, <laughs> our goddess. Okay, this one's called This Ancient Love. Let us. 
night. <laughs> Enjoy the rest of the festival on your computer. <laughs> The fun thing about these performers is they not only are they good, they love what they do and they just that love the music just comes through. I hope you enjoy it as much as we do. It's been a pleasure being here today. It, this is a free festival, but it is, wasn't free to put it on. So we hope that you take advantage of the different ways to give and make a donation while you're listening to us. I want to hit once more the sponsors that make this so possible for us to do. Long time, City of Urbana, the Arts and Culture Program. I believe the mayor was on this morning. I know she was on last night, welcoming us to Urbana. They really appreciate us being here. And the Sousa Archives from the University of Illinois. They make possible the presentations that we do, especially for the younger crowd. As I said, I'm a member of the steering committee and I just want to thank all the people on the steering committee, all the technicians, all the people that are walking around here to make this possible to come to you today. One of our members of the steering committee is Ayla McDonald and she is our next performer. She's from Urbana, she's very local, doing vocal uh, rep impressions from the flow of the seasons as they change and from the folk traditions of the United Kingdom. I know she has a really nice Irish lilt. Tune in for an assortment of traditional ballads across the pond. Matt, Matt Torino of Meadowhawk is accompanying her on the guitar. And we welcome them to the stage this morning for our Folk and Roots Festival. Thank you, Folk and Roots, for having me. This first one is called The Maid on the Shore. I learned it from the Irish group Solas. Um, and it's about a mysterious woman who's taking a stroll and happens upon a ship. There was a fair maid and she lived all alone. She lived all alone on the shore. No one could she find for to calm her sweet mind but to wander alone on the shore 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 to wander alone on the shore oh. there was a fine captain who sailed a fine ship and the weather being steady and fair, oh, I shall die, I shall die, this dear captain did cry. If I can't have that maid on the shore, 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 if I can't have that maid on the Sure. Oh. After many persuasions, they brought her on board. They seated her down in his chair. Oh. He invited her down to his cabin below. Farewell to all sorrow and care. Oh. Farewell to all sorrow and care, oh. I'll sing you a song, this fair maid did cry. The captain was weeping for joy, oh. She sang it so sweetly, so soft and completely. Sink captain and sailors to sleep, oh, captain and sailors to sleep, oh. She robbed them of jewels, she robbed them of wealth, she robbed them of costly fine fare, oh. the captain's broad sword she used as an oar and rowed her way back to the shore 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 rowed her way back to the 
shore. The men they were mad and the men they were sad. They were deeply sunk down in despair. For to see her go away with her booty so gay. With her rings and her things and her fine pharaoh. With her rings and her things and her fine pharaoh. Oh, don't be so sad and sunk down in despair. For you should have known me a before. For I say to sleep and I robbed you of wealth. Now again I'm a maid on the shore, shore, shore. Again I'm a maid on the shore. Oh. That was Maid on the Shore. This next one, Matt Torino, will accompany me. Um, Matt was very wonderful to offer to play guitar along with me today. And the song that we'll be singing is called Gold Clottering. Um, it's about a lovesick boy who buys a very expensive gift for the lady of his affection and um, ends up never getting it back. much Matt. I've actually had the enormous pleasure of working with Matt on a farm since summertime and um, it's been a really amazing experience getting to work with the land during this time where so much is uncertain and um, observing the way that the landscape changes and feeling as if I'm a part of it and 
an important aspect of the landscape at the farm have been crows, um, which flock in murders all around all of the time. <laughs> and um, they're quite fun to scare off of the tomato plants, especially when Matt drives his car <laughs> through the rows. Um, it's been quite entertaining to watch. And so this next song is called The Twa Carbies, and it's about a conversation between two crows in Scotland. As I was walking all alone, I heard twa carbies mac and main, and one untie the other did say, Oh, where shall we gang and die in the day? Oh, where shall we gang and die in the day? Out behind yon old fail die. There lies a fallen, fresh slain knight. Nobody kens what he lies there, oh. But his hawk and his hound and his lady fair, oh. But his hawk and his hound and his lady fair. His hound has tied the hunting gun, a for to bring the wild fowl him. His wife has taken another mate, oh, so we can make our dinner straight, oh, we can make our dinner straight. And you can sit on his white breast bone, and I will pick out his bunny blue in, and with a lock of his yellow hair, oh, We'll make a nest where it grows bare, oh, we'll make a nest where it grows bare. Many a one for him make main, but none shall ken where he is gain, or his white bones when they grow bare, oh, the winds shall blow forever mare, oh, the winds shall blow forever mare. As I was walking all alone, I heard twa carbies mac and main, and one untie the other did say, oh, where shall we gang and die in the day, oh, where shall we gang and die in the day? Rather a morbid one <laughs> with Halloween coming up. I thought you guys would enjoy it. This next piece, Matt is rejoining me. Um, we are playing If I Was a Blackbird, which I first heard sung by the um, British musician Sam Lee. Um, and this is a very traditional piece, I think came out of Ireland. Um, and so we're playing the a version that's a bit more inspired, I think, by um, Andy Martin, I believe. Here we go. <laughs> Mr. T. 
take me to Tony Rogue Fair That he'd buy me fine ribbons Tie them up in my hair He had offered to marry And to stay by my side But then in the morning He'd sailed with a tide My parents, they chided me me and my true love married we should never be oh but let them deprive me let them do what they will while there's breath in my body he's the one i love still oh if i was a blackbird could whistle could sing i would fall my true love sails in And in the top breaking I would there build my nest And I'd flutter my wings O'er his lily white breast This is my final piece for you today. Um, it is called Queen Among the Heather, and it is a very ancient um, traditional Scot Scottish ballad, um, and I've learned the June Tabor version. I hope I can kind of do it justice because she is just phenomenal. Um, I first heard this song last summer, summer 2019, when we could still travel, and I uh, happened to find myself in Scotland um, hiking with the musician Sam Lee actually, and um, a bunch of wonderful people through the Nest Collective program. And um, I was sat on a cliff overlooking, I think, the River Feshi. Um, and Sam had come up and seen me sitting there, surrounded by Heather, and he said, oh, queen among the Heather. And I had no idea what he meant, because <laughs> I'd never heard the song before. Um, and so later that evening, he sang it for us. Here goes. As I went out one morning fair over lofty hills, moorland and mountain, it was there I met with a fine young girl. While with others I was out a hunting. shoes nor stockings did she wear neither had she had nor had she favor but her golden curls in ringlets rare in the gentle breeze played round her shoulders I said for lassie why roam your lane why roam your lane amongst the heather she said my father's away from home and i'm hard enough all his used to See if you be mine, and if you lie amongst a bed of feathers, it's in silks and satins, it's you will shine, and you'll be my queen among the heather. She said kind sir your offer is good but i'm afraid it's meant for laughter for i know you are some rich squire's son and i'm a poor lame shepherd's daughter 
Thank you all so very much for having me and I hope you're enjoying this fantastic festival. It's really a treasure and I'm so grateful to everyone on the steering committee and everyone who's been involved in bringing this together during the pandemic so that we can still celebrate um, music in our community and around the world for everyone else who is now able to watch through our virtual live streaming. Take care everyone. Wow, Ayla, what an angel. I'm so pleased to be able to uh, host uh, and, and witness that, that beautiful music she has to share. Uh, we have such a great lineup this, this morning and, and the whole weekend. I'm so pleased to be a part of it. I'm Emily McCown. I'm on the booking committee for the Champaign-Urbana Folk and Roots Festival. Thanks for tuning in today. You know, when we were talking about uh, planning for this virtual festival, we, we were uh, very, very uh, inspired to highlight black voices. And, and you might have noticed that so far, but at the top of our list was a renowned local musician, Candy Foster. And we really wanted to take some quality time with Candy to talk about his childhood, what it was like to be a musician. Uh, in his time, he was in Soul Brothers in the Vietnam era, and for the last decade or more, he's been in his own showcase, Candy Foster in the Shades of Blue. So I got to have him over, great honor, to my backyard and ask him uh, some questions about his life. And I, I really hope you enjoy uh, this interview with Candy Foster. Well, Candy Foster, thanks for joining me. Thanks for having me. Yeah, this is uh, our virtual Folk and Roots Festival uh, this year, as most things are, are virtual and recorded. And um, yeah, it's a real treat. I tell you, as a musician myself, I, I it's, you're a legend, and I'm so well, pleased to you. have you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. I'm glad you told me that, because I'm... Uh, <laughs> I only know it when people tell me it. <laughs> yeah. I'm serious about that, really. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's good. So uh, can, you, can you tell us a little bit about your, your childhood and how you got into music? What got you playing? Well, it's uh, been so long ago. <laughs> but uh, really, yet it's not that long ago. I, you know, I guess uh, we like to say it start with my mother. Mm -hmm. My mother was a kind of a blues and jazz singer. Uh, and uh, when I was a kid, around the house was always music going on, and and a lot of times I just thought she was in there just having a good time, but she was rehearsing. Was she? And yeah, and I was like, man, she's having a good time. <laughs> so I would pay a little attention, and and I later on figured it out that she, because she did she did uh, uh, shows. She was like a part-time warrior. She didn't travel around the country and do all that all kind of stuff. She uh, did weekend shows and 
and uh, she had a good chance of working with some, which now uh, people know them as kind of famous people, but at the time they weren't that famous. <laughs> sure. You know, like like uh, uh, West Montgomery and all them used to come to Danville uh -huh. and uh, hang out and play and, and do their little shows <laughs> before they went back to Indianapolis. And uh, there was a, a couple of guys was pretty good. They had uh, real nice bands, and and it was a couple of uh, women that Bernie's Homes and and a few other ladies that had real nice bands, and they sang and played. Uh -huh. My mother would uh, in, intertwine with them. Sure. And the kind of singer my mother was, if you ever got a chance to hear Diana Washington, uh, she was uh, the little Diana Washington of Champ Danville, Champaign County. Oh, wow. And, uh, <laughs> but she was a little woman, and we, uh, we called her Inch. Inch? <laughs> yeah, that's oh, what. that's a good name. Yeah, I didn't call her that. But <laughs> <laughs> you called her mom. <laughs> yeah, but they, they, you know, I used to. It took me a while to catch on to that too. Then when I got older, I'm like, oh well, that's a good name. Yeah. <laughs> She's she about as big as an inch. <laughs> yeah. But she had a strong voice, you know. Sure. And and, a, and you and it was was it inspiring to see her on stage? Did you picture yourself doing that too when you? Oh when you yeah, I there? I just kind of just fell in love with it, and I and in my neighborhood, see, you got to realize back then. Big bands were very strong. Yeah. On in any part of the the country, any neighborhood, you know, small town, big town. The big thing is like now, you know, they can't wait to get a little basketball team together or <laughs> or or something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, back then, when uh, during my mother and, and father's time, they couldn't wait to put a big bands together and swinging bands and dancing and doing all that kind of stuff yeah. uh tap dancing and a lot of entertainment around around me and is i just kind of as a kid i'd pay a lot of attention to it when when kids were playing cow i played cowboy but when when the uh, uh later on when the grown people got all work and started re re rehearsing I was right around there. They'd yeah. run me off, but I'd come back, right back. <laughs> you jump right back in. <laughs> yeah. Finally, they stopped uh, trying to run me away from there, and I just let me. I was the only kid in the whole neighborhood who could stay around while some of them rehearsed. You know, you know I kept looking at my mother every other day or every day in there uh, with the jukebox. And it, <laughs> we've, had, we've had one there you had to wind up. <laughs> and then we had the big records. No, that, uh, no. You probably don't want to run about no, all I that. Get <laughs> wired it up. And yeah, she'd tell me, hey, wind that thing back up, boy. <laughs> don't wind it too tight now. <laughs> it'll blow up on it. <laughs> but, and, and she'd be playing Ruth Brown and, and Diana Washington, and, and she'd be uh, singing, cooking, and singing. Oh. Some of my dad's buddies, old, old drinking buddies, and or just hangout buddies. They 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 work together, sure. and uh, they was all hanging out. They said, "Hey, can you sing like your mama?" <laughs> and I said, "Yeah, I can sing." And, and, and so one of the guys said, "Yeah, I know he can sing. He said, he, he, sing us a tune. Give us a tune." Yeah. And I did. Uh, Turned around, I look, and they said, "Go ahead, yeah, go ahead." So I started singing this song. What song was it? <laughs> Sixty Minute Man. Can you sing a little bit? Well, just a line. Yeah. Sixty Minute Man. They call me the Sixty Minute Man. <laughs> <laughs> I know that one. Yeah. And, uh, I didn't know what they're talking about. I just know 60 minutes. <laughs> and I be singing that song. I sang a little bit of that song. They like, yeah, that one can sing. 
my thing was I was just strung out on singing. Uh-huh. And, and uh, I had singing groups, you know, like the Temptations type of thing. But, of course, Temptations wasn't even around then. Yeah. But I had groups like that. In Danville, uh, we had the Five Shades. The Five Shades? <laughs> yeah. That, uh-huh. We all wore those shades. And, <laughs> in other words, if you see the Blues Brothers, you see five of them, we was like five Blues Brothers. Yeah. And we were four of the Blues Brothers. <laughs> <laughs> After uh, I got out and left, left and came to Champaign. What year was that? That was in 69, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Guy was a renowned musician around here at one time, uh, uh, Tony Zamora. Mm. Uh, he was a big time jazz musician. That, uh, well, I tell you, Don Smith and Donnie Heitler and all them guys used to play play for him. And but it was a black club that opened up downtown there near First Street on First Street in Champaign called the Rainbow Tavern. And it's a black club. And and they told him they said, Well, we're gonna hire you, Tony, but we 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 like the jazz, but we you gotta have a singer. And they said, well, well, I can get a say. They said, no, we want a little blues and little stuff like that, the swinging stuff. So, so somebody told him about me, and they, he came over to the house. I'm, I'm 18 and 19. Yeah. I got married 18 years old. Yeah, so. yeah. And I said, well, man, I don't know the I said, I, want, I got singing groups, and I, and I do all that kind of stuff. And no, no, we ain't got no time for no singing group. We can't, ain't enough money for that. <laughs> yeah, right. I, we want you to say, he said, he said, all you had to do, learn three songs, three blues songs and stuff like that, and start off, and enough to say, we got a blues singer. <laughs> I was like, wow. Well, oh. And that was it. Yeah. Three songs. So, yeah. And then Tony, he gets this big offer on him to play with bigger bands and do all that. And then he, you know, he's building his career up and this thing. So he said, I ain't, I, I ain't doing this no more. Of course, I, I wasn't uh, trying to stick around there for the money. Mm. Mm-hmm. I was making $7 a night. Oh, wow. wow. <laughs> $7 a night. Yeah. I, I'd like, uh, you thought it was... Seven hundred dollars, man. Woo. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm doing all right. Wow. Uh, I would I would have did it for free. Yeah. And, and, and because it was a is a challenge to me and all that. And so, and they said, well, we're gonna have to break the band up if, if the band leader is gone and he's playing with these big time guys and he wants to make money and go go do something big. And I'm saying, oh man, don't break the band up. We can get somebody else. And I don't know. And the Edwell, they said, "Well, who's gonna have the band then?" I said, "I'm looking around, and I'm the, all of them are grown, but me, I'm 18." Yeah. So next thing I know, they tell me, "No, man, you can't run no band. You ain't old enough." I said, so later on. When I got to be 19, I, I, I said, I'm running the band. I'm getting me a band. I went around and finally I put together a pretty good band. And the thing about it, as I went through my travels, there was a lot of great musicians that come along mm-hmm. uh, that helped me and, and, and helped each, we all helped each other uh, to move along. And that's the whole thing that I'd like to bring up is the fact that we had black musicians, white musicians, and when when the bell rung and we came out on the stage or in one of them old raggedy clubs, it wasn't no color involved. Hmm. Everybody was the same on that bandstand. Hmm. Mm-hmm. And and we you know, it wasn't none of that. It, it didn't was, matter anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Now the people out there might have had trouble, but we sure. didn't have no trouble. Mm-hmm. And shoot, them guys 
uh, coming to my house and eat uh, cornbread, pig feet, and all that, yeah. and barbecue. And and I'd go to their house, and we'd wear, sometimes we wear each other's clothes. And, <laughs> yeah, hey. Yeah. The music brought you together. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I'm, uh, you know, that, you hardly ever, ever heard anything like that about in, in the in the musician world. Mm. They all got along. They all respected each other. And uh, the ones that were over there on the other end of town playing, the ones that got to play it on those campus and we didn't. Sure. Uh, they didn't rub it in, or they didn't, and we didn't bother them because it wasn't their fault. Right. It, was, it had nothing to do with it. I got lucky because my band, which was Soul Soul Brothers, that that was a, my one of my best bands of all time. Yeah. Uh, Soul Brothers. Mm -hmm. That was like the seventies. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, it came up because it went into what's what, what it did. We got to play a little bit on base. That's when you had the Air Force Base, right? And we play up there, and then we play on campus a little bit every now and then around here. And you've uh, helped a lot of musicians come into their own too. I've 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 watched some of them grow up and around me and and go away and be lawyers, professors, and <laughs> uh, music teachers. And, mm -hmm. and you know, I watched them, help them get married. I played for their weddings. I, I did, you know, some of them, they just look at me as the, the other dad, you know, the, mm -hmm. an old or grandpa or whatever. Things that I see it is that the youth today they might, they're going to make mistakes, but the lives that, you know, we losing a lot of lives, especially in the black community and the black world, and we don't really have no real answers for it. But it's one thing I can say for them, they're not giving up. They know it's rough. They know their life is, and when they walk out, the, the door every morning to go to work or go to school that uh, life is shaky for them, but they hanging in there. Yeah. And you can say what you want about them uh, or some people like, eh, them kids, they don't, uh, they just terrible. Well, no, I look at it like this. One time they said I was terrible. <laughs> and, right. Yeah. Right. I, I look, I look at uh, um about 20 years ago, I was playing a, 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 a kind of a formal dance at a, a in Danville. I came there to play to play for them and everything. And there was a couple of my teachers that was that was still living at the time that were there, and they come up to me and I said, "Oh man, I just." Uh, and one of them teachers, I remember like it yesterday, and said, told him, told my mother what I was <laughs> said, he is terrible. He don't, he won't, he's hard at it. He won't listen. He ain't gonna never be nothing. Of course, that was a terrible thing to say. Shows them. Yeah. You know, I want to give you a chance to to talk a little bit about the scholarship if you if you like i would love to hear more about what that is and how long it's going and when when i started this and some guys asked me why i'm doing it i said i want to i i don't want to give back because i didn't tell you a story about some of the people that I, that was helping me and and uh and and uh the uh, fellowship that i got throughout Danville and even here in Champaign uh, that that helped me move up the ladder for us being acknowledged to people before being a, a, a entertainer. Yeah. And uh, they have accepted me as one of the leaders of, of the entertainment world around Champaign, Urbana. And uh, I didn't do that by myself. Mm -hmm. So I'm here to say, 
one day I woke up and said, well, what are you doing to give back? And then, and I'm saying to myself, well, what can you do? And the, the answer is, is that I only can give back what I know how to do. And, and I know about music, I know about entertainment, I know how people, what people need to be successful if that's what they want to do. So I'm there, the main point of it is, is giving back. Giving back. Yeah. So, so you raise money for kids to be able to study music at Parkland, is that right? Yeah, they, uh, uh, I didn't exactly know how I was going to be able to do it. So, you know, I, quite naturally, I went out and asked them, and they could give me some kind of suggestions about it. And then, uh, you know, I, I told them I wanted to, I didn't like the fact that a lot of musicians out here uh, uh, didn't know how to uh, uh, explain what, they, what they're playing or where they come from. Or they, they didn't know the history behind the music they're playing. Mm. Yep. I think that's it's not not a, not a good not look. good side. It's no. not a good side. You know, I need they need to know mm -hmm. where that stuff come from. Mm -hmm. They need to know about the gospel know music. Their history, they, yeah. yeah, they need to know about the blues. Mm -hmm. You know, just don't say, well, we're gonna play the blues. Some of them don't even know what the blues is. You know, they just think they know. You know, and and uh, all this kind of stuff they talk. You know, you need to do your homework in history. Yeah, and. And know where you know where it come from, so before you can know where you're going, mm -hmm. it's it's that kind of thing. And a lot of times, you just can't get all that stuff out of the street. Really you, glad. I, you really know, glad my thing is, and I certainly appreciate what people like yourself and the organizations that you belong to, and uh, means to this community, means to what we do. It's another big way of keeping things alive, mm -hmm. keeping people uh, 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 aware and and even the history. Yeah. And the history is so important because it's just like what the more these uh, young black kids or young kids find out about their history the stronger they get that I, but it's one thing I try to always say to my kids or, or people around me, they should never, never, ever forget that whatever we got to, and from here to here to here, we didn't do that by ourselves. That's right. And that, that's what's the only thing that worries me sometimes about some of the young black kids uh, you know, they got to realize, I said, when you seen Martin Luther King walking, and all them walking across that bridge, and Lewis and all them, you better take a good look at that crowd. And they wasn't all black. And you should never forget that. And, you know, and, and that's the only way, only way you're going to get from there and keep moving. That, you know, some of them, if you got a few of them, not, you know, the young people, they, they, they getting that together. They understand that. Yeah. 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 They are. But some of them in my age bracket and up and over didn't get that. Mm -hmm. They kind of, ooh, 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 nah, nah, I don't want to hear all that. Is there your final, final words for, for the community? We're just so thankful you took the time to share your stories. Well, I'm thankful and feel real blessed to, uh, to be a part of anything and everything that's contained in music and, and the growth of this community and our young people uh, because I'm strictly for growth and, and, and people to acknowledge the fact that we got to change. We got to vote, we got to change, we got to live like it's, <clears throat> there is a tomorrow. And I love life, and I love the life I live, and I love the skin I'm in, 
and I love everybody uh, uh, when it comes to just people in Burma because I'm a people person, and I just think that the Lord he keeps me there for a good reason, and that's to make other people happy, and that makes me happy. I want to thank you. I want to thank Candy for taking the time with me and for us. What a gift, all those words of wisdom. You know, thanks for tuning in. And, and remember, this, all of this lineup, all these wonderful musicians, are, uh, it's free of charge. So please, uh, you know, look on your screen. There's a QR code you can donate, uh, or you can go to the website, see you, Folk and Roots. And, and just every little bit counts. Uh, and you know, you could be like my mom and donate $100 and get one of these fine t-shirts. Or uh, just a few bucks will get us there to next year. We'll see us through to the other side of this thing. Uh, and also, we want to thank our sponsors. They keep us going, all the wonderful local organizations. One of my favorites, uh, check out Page Roasting Company. If you haven't had their coffee, it's the best this side of the Mississippi. And, uh, and yeah, thank you to all our sponsors. So up next, we have Jean-René Belakita and Leticia Kiongu. And they play a wonderful fusion of traditional African music, Congolese, Roomba, gospel music, jazz, all of it, and I, I hope you enjoy their duo set here. Hi everyone, I'm Jean-René Balekita and Leticia, uh, Beaumont Ministries. So we are performing for Folk on the Roots Festival at Free Library Urbana. So enjoy, our first song is titled Yaya yeah, Yesu, yeah, so Jesus, my brother, my big brother. And I'm going to use my traditional instrument. We have a Kora and Kinsansi. So there we go. Moto moko akosa kate kombo na ye nzambe na bika mwa na ye bi moto moko ye akosa kate kombo na ye nzambe na bika mwa ya ya yeswe o ya ya nanga o yeswe ya ya nanga i ya ya yeswe ya ya nanga Oh yeswe ya ya nanga moko ya ya solo azali nzambe nangai Oh yeswe ya ya nangai ya ya yeswe ya ya nanga Oh yeswe ya ya nanga Yeswe solo ya ya nangai, oh Yeswe ya ya nangai, ya ya Yeswe ya ya nanga, oh Yeswe ya ya nangai moko, ya ya Yeswe. Ya ya yeswe, oh ya ya nanga, oh yeswe, ya ya nanga imoko.
ya ya yeswe ya ya nanga o yeswe ya ya nanga moko Thank you. Okay. And the next song is Vomintantu Minakwiza. We are singing in our native language in Kikongo. So uh, don't worry about everything that can happen in your life. Keep your goal. Go ahead. It doesn't matter. God knows everything. He's going to make a way for you. Thank you. Here we go. Mina kwi 
Jesus, me na kutu ya misa. Tuna lengwa kubatina, kana kutu sisako. Bomi tatu, me na kuiza, me na kutu ya misa. Tuna lengwa kubatina, kana kutu sisako. Imbila, imbila. Let me grab my guitar. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's chilly. Thank you. Uh, we are performing for Folk and Roots Festival at Free Library Urbana. And the next song is Salt of the Earth. We have to be useful for the others. And during this hard time, just giving joy, peace through our gift. Thank you so much. Enjoy. So this is the song Salt of the Earth. salt of the earth but if the salt has lost its savor where if shall it be salted it is therefore good for nothing but to be cast out and be trodden on the foot of man we are the salt of the earth, but if the salt has lost its savor, where if shall it be salted, it is therefore good for nothing but to be cast out and be trodden under foot of man. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. I am yours. I am yours. I am yours. I am yours. A city set on a hill. A city set on a hill cannot. I am yours, 
Lord, you use me everywhere I go. I am yours. I am yours. I am yours. The salt of the earth, but if the salt has lost its savor, where if shall it be salted, it is therefore good for nothing but to be cast out and be trodden on the foot of men. A city set on a hill. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. I am yours. I am yours. I am yours. I am yours. A city set on a hill. So the next song is Peace and Love. Everybody need this time Peace and Love. So we're going to sing in English and also in Kikongo. Enjoy. And love. You need peace and love. 
peace and love. With me and peace and love. Peace and love. Oh yeah 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 yeah. Yeah oh yeah oh oh. Yeah yeah oh yeah. And love. Peace and love. I need peace and love. Peace and love. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Now the bonus. <laughs> the last one, the bonus.
Laetitia. Jean René. See you next time. Wow, that was gorgeous. We have so much talent here in Champaign-Urbana. Thank you so much, Jean René and Leticia. That was beautiful. And you know, that was filmed by our uh, tech guru, Jake Metz, who's here making it all happen right now. New show, oh yeah, this is the whole set. And the Rose Bowl Tavern for for uh, making it all happen virtual to keep us all safe and to get us get us through and share share so much music even while we're all at home. So that was filmed. Jake went over to the front of the Urbana Free Library with Jean Rene and Leticia at over at Cherry Alley, and we really want to thank our our partners and that support this. Uh, festival every year and the library has been such a critical partner. Carol Inskeep, my girl, love you. Thanks for making that happen. And uh, also breaking news, you know, you might have heard that if you donate $100 you get a t-shirt, but now it's only 50. So if you donate $50, yeah, you'll get one of these fancy t-shirts. Uh, but again, our partners are so critical in making this festival happen and Paul Worth over at the Iron Post was generous enough to uh, share his patio for our uh, next panel discussion. And like I said, this year more and more we, we want to continue to lift black voices and, and support Black Lives Matter and, uh, and support local musicians of color. Uh, this this next piece is a discussion with some of the some of the best of the best uh, musicians of color, and I'll let them introduce themselves. But I would like to introduce uh, Deanna Hens, also my girl. Uh, she is a professor at the U of I, and uh, she plays a lot of folk music with us here at the Rose Bowl and around town. And and she is the moderator, and she can she'll she'll uh, introduce the panelists for a good discussion about what it's like to be a musician of color in Champaign-Urbana. I hope you enjoy. Thank you so much for joining me today. Um, this is for a panel that I'm hosting for the Folk and Roots Festival. I'm joined by four incredibly talented musicians that have been mainstays, main, mainstay, excuse me, of the Champaign-Urbana music scene for the past several years. And so, I'd like to welcome them all and thank them so much for coming to speak today. And so first off, I'd like to start with some introductions. And so start with Pete. Would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, absolutely. So my name is Pete Shungu. Uh, my stage name is Afro D. Yeah. And I'm a multi-instrumentalist. Uh, trumpet is like my primary thing that I do. I've been playing the trumpet since the fifth grade. I play some keys as well. Um, and then I rhyme and I do spoken word poetry. Um, so really, when I think about styles of music, my music has encompassed a variety of styles, you know, from hip hop to soul to funk to jazz. Um, those have been some of the main influences. Um, but uh, yeah, I came out to Champaign in 2017. Um, originally from the East Coast, so definitely kind of a change coming out here. Um, but one of the first people I met out here was uh, Aaron A Plus, uh, you know, who you're going to hear from in a minute. And I found out about this event called Soul on Sundays and really um, started to connect to the scene here. So I've been here for about three years now. Um, and in that time, I played in a couple different bands, currently playing a band called uh, Afro D and Global Sound Waves. Um, so I play trumpet and rhyme with that group. Um, but uh, yeah, my dad is from the Democratic Republic of Congo. So, um, you know, my roots are kind of based in, you know, in, in, in that that musical reality as well. So really when I think about music, I think about it globally as well. Um, and then outside of music, um, I actually work um, in the Champaign Unifor schools. I teach uh, ESL at uh, Central High School. So uh, for me, music and education are kind of like these two streams that come together. And both of those are equally important for me. Thank you. Oh, mm. thank, I was gonna say thank you so much. And Cece, would you like to go ahead? <laughs> yes, I can go ahead. My name is Cece Stewart. Um, I have a lot of stage names, <laughs> but the main one right now is Lola Honey. Uh, I am a writer, I am a vocalist, I'm a musician, 
Uh, I'm an activist. I'm an art ambassador. I'm an art curator. <laughs> like, I, I think my main mission is to bring people together for the purpose of healing and the purpose of therapy through music, the power that it has to change your mood, make your day better, make you make better decisions, and power you to reach your goals. Um, I've been here off and on for about 10 years, but in the music scene heavy, I've been about five years um, with my good friend over here, Brandon, and Mike Ingram and New Souls. Yeah. They, uh, they found me. I was a lonely little bird. <laughs> <laughs> but no, yeah, I needed something to... Um, to really motivate me to stay on my path uh, towards, I mean, I was all connected. Our music is gonna be in my life whether I liked it or not. So the scene and working with them here has definitely been my thing. I've loved to be in it and it's helped me grow. So yeah, that's Thank what I do. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, CC And Aaron, how about you? Okay, my name is Aaron Wilson. I hate to say that too loud because the police might come from a better. <laughs> um, but everybody, some people know me as Aaron, uh, A plus or A train, depends on what genre of music you see me in. I come from the new crime capital of the world, Danville, Illinois. Um, <laughs> I was, <laughs> I'm born and raised, quartet kid. Uh, gospel has been my foundation and branched off into blues music. And I've been touring and just playing uh, with Kilburn Alley Blues Band, and the list goes on. And what else to say? I'm just glad to be a part of the CU um, music team. That's it. <laughs> Thank you. And how about you, Brandon? My name is Brandon T. Washington. Um, <clears throat> Right now, professionally, I'm the uh, general music teacher at Dr. Howard Elementary in mm. Champaign Unit 4. Um, but musically, I've been playing in a variety of different bands, uh, Funky Butt Drum Club, Temple of Loman, started out in a band called Solstice. But I've been doing, and presently, like CC said, doing uh, New Souls with Mike and Mike Ingram and, and CC. And uh, I've been playing in town since about 1992 um, and been involved in education in this town since about 95. Um, so I've always viewed music as a as a thing that lets me see the world or i should say lets me see that there is something larger than myself in the world like it's more of a form of connection like being able to uh i've always said that one of my favorite things to do is to play a lot of the outdoor shows that we get to play being mem being residents in this town um and i get to see all the people from all the different walks of my own life in one place. And that's when I see how music has the power to connect. And it's been, it's been a driving force in why I teach music and why I uh, play it live. So I'm just uh, like Aaron, I'm, I'm just happy to be a part of the conversation. Wonderful. Thank you so much for those introductions. And actually this nicely segues into kind of the first question that I wanted to bring to y'all. And so, Brandon, you've been in the music scene in Champaign-Urbana a long time, and I just wanted to know, especially for those of us who may be a little bit newer, um, what's it been like being a part of the music scene in Champaign-Urbana, and how has that experience differ for musicians of color? Well, <clears throat> one of the things that I've noticed a long time ago, I had it put to me that uh, it didn't matter what style of music you played, music was like a big apartment building. There was like, you know, jazz in the top right corner and classical musicians on the first floor, rock and roll dudes on the on the east side of the second floor, and, <laughs> and, and hip hop and rappers on the west side of the second floor. Mm -hmm. It didn't really matter what style you played as long as you were in the building. And starting out playing, I mean, I was, I started out in my professional music career, playing a style of music that I didn't see very many black people in. I played guitar and I played in rock bands. So, mm -hmm. so it was, you know, that part of it was a little different because in a lot of the spaces that I would play and shows that I would go to, I would be one of maybe 10 black people in the room, mm -hmm. or I'd be, you know, the only black person in the room at certain yeah. parties yeah. and things. Like, know that you know, feeling. <laughs> I'd be at a basement show with, you know, it'd be a punk band playing, I'm the only black face around, you know, things like that. So, and sometimes it didn't matter. Most of the time, I would say it didn't matter. 
but sometimes it did in a positive way and in a negative way. Mm -hmm. In particular, in a positive way, I remember being uh, asked to play at a really loose hippie party. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the power went out and I just had my acoustic guitar and I played a bunch of stuff that I like to play. Obscure 80s uh, new wave music, which is one of the things I like to pull out on acoustic guitar. And, uh, you know, spirituals, things like John the Revelator, which is something that I've always done live. And to feeling like I was able to kind of bridge those two things and the audience was there with me. Yes. It was mm -hmm. like they were really, they were listening to all sides of it. Negatively, I distinctly remember a show, there used to be a place out on uh, uh, High Cross Road. Uh, it was called TK Wendell's. They had a bunch of uh, softball fields. It's rigs now. Oh, okay. Hmm. Um, mm -hmm. And they had shows out there and my band Solstice, which was more of a kind of a pop rock band, got booked with Deden, who was uh, one of, they were, they're friends of mine. The drummer now, he's up in Chicago composing and stuff, but they were a death metal band. These two things do not go together. <laughs> <laughs> so I walk in and the first thing I see is this cat that has a t-shirt on that says, white bikers unite equal rights for whites and that turned me completely around for the entire night like i wanted to let's play the show and let's get the mm -hmm. out of here <laughs> because i don't want to you know yeah. i'm not afraid to stand up for myself and i'm not afraid to speak my mind but there's a difference between that and walking into a situation that is potentially injurious to yourself oh, right and so i haven't had a whole lot of overt negative things happen right. mm -hmm. a few very few mm -hmm. but there's been a lot of that you know you walk into a room and you feel that cloud and you're like hmm something's not right here <laughs> and is it me? you know and yeah exactly <laughs> is, it, is it is it me you know so mostly i would say in the high 80s my experience as a black musician in champagne has been positive but there's been that 10 15 percent of interactions that have been like mm -hmm. hmm Mm, mm. Yeah. You know, but but I will also go as far as to say that there are a lot of uh, my hoopty. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, a lot of the musicians that I've played with, um, overwhelmingly, of course, a lot of them have been white. Do the style of music that I played have been nothing but supportive. I haven't run, really run into an instance where I've been in a band or on a gig with somebody that has been less than 100% on my team. Agreed. Agreed. That makes a lot of sense. I know for sure I've noticed the, uh, just the mixture of people that come together in the music scene here in Champaign-Urbana being very distinct from, you know, some of the especially larger cities that I moved here from. And mm -hmm. I thought that was always really fascinating about the scene here. Um, and actually, this actually kind of bridges to the next question I have, which um, I was interested to hear from Pete. Um, how does the music that um, you played or listened to growing up influence your style and your identity formation now? And how do you bring that into the music that you play in the various uh, places in, that you do? Yeah, I, I think for me, like when I think not only about music, but also about my life in general, one of the first like sort of words that comes to mind is multi. And just the fact that, like, I feel like I grew up in an environment where I was part of Congolese culture from my dad, but also I grew up in Jersey and I was around, you know, all types of different people. Um, and so I was influenced by that. You know, I grew up, like, I was born in the 80s, raised by the 90s, more or less. And I think that, um, you know, growing up, I listened to The Roots. I listened to Tribe Called Quest. And that had, like, a profound influence on sort of my own thinking and my own recognition that I had a voice that I could project through hip hop. Um, and I think at the same time, um, I, uh, you know, I also, you know, would listen to these Congolese records and get these ideas in my head, you know, listen to Sukus and kind of like feel that as part of, part of who I am. Um, and then I also have uh, on my mom's side of the family, uh, my uncle is a classical piano and flute teacher. And my mom had me take piano lessons from like the age of seven. And so I'm so grateful for that because um, basically having that foundation and that side of music, um, you know, I picked up the trumpet a couple of years later 
and was able to just take what I had learned on the piano and transfer it to the trumpet. Um, you know, I started listening to Miles and Coltrane and, and all those cats also. And that really, um, you know, had a big influence on me also. And I think um, growing up, uh, my brother, who's a couple of years younger than me, he and I have always been really close. Um, and so, you know, first time I started like recording stuff like we would just like take out this Fisher Price tape recorder and just record <laughs> ourselves like <laughs> rhyming and I would be playing something random on the piano um, but that was you know that was like kind of the roots of me as a hip-hop artist um, and then I continued to do that um, I was fortunate to go to um, go to college in the Boston area so I grew up in Jersey then I went up to Boston went to college up there and then really started to find my voice in, 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 the, in the music scene in Boston. Um, and so I, uh, um, I started doing spoken word poetry at that time as well. Um, Cause it was kind of funny. Like I always thought of hip hop and poetry as these distinct things. And hip hop was like, you know, this one thing that, you know, black people did and poetry was this other thing that white people did. And I was like, <laughs> you know, I realized now, nah, like, you know, and, yeah. and I connected with this cat, Jeff Robinson in Cambridge, who has um, this uh, like weekly uh, poetry slam. And so when I came out here and I found Soul on Sundays, it reminded me a little bit of this like poetry jam that Jeff Robinson had put together. And that was one of the foundations for me in the Boston scene. So really for me, it's just like, you know, kind of the ver this variety of styles that, that speaks um, to my music. And I feel fortunate that, you know, kind of having a little bit of the classical training, but also just really being rooted, you know, Classical music, like I appreciate it, but it's not, it's not what speaks to me. What mm -hmm. speaks to me is jazz, is soul, is hip hop. And so to be able to be an artist who's root, you know, has, has, uh, you know, influence from these other styles, but really like finding my own soul in the music, I think it's kind of where, where that's come together um, for me. Can I ask you a question? Did you go to yeah. Berkeley? Um, no, nah, I did not oh, okay. go to Berkeley. And when I yeah, when I lived in when I lived in Boston, <laughs> that's the question that everyone asked me. I was like, <laughs> Trump, they're like, you go to Berkeley? That's like yeah. the question. Yeah. Yep. I did not go to Berkeley. I went to uh, I went to Tufts University, um, which is in the Boston area. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I was fortunate when I was in college. Um, I played in a big band there, so the college had like a jazz band. Okay. We we're able to go to Cuba my senior year and play wow. down there. So I think that's the other stream that I didn't really talk about is like travel. I wasn't able to do a lot of travel when I was young, mm -hmm. but then um, as I got older, um, I was able to study in Paris when I was in oh, college. Wow. I went to Cuba um, wow. and wow. Uh, yeah, those things really influenced me. And yeah, to this day, I feel like I really think of music as something that's truly international. And so, um, you know, I've even, even written raps. Um, cuando hablo en español, porque ahora hablo español. Yeah. So I speak Spanish now. I can like rap in Spanish. That's and so awesome. speaking yeah. French is something that's part of my heritage. My dad being from Congo. Yeah. So uh, je peux parler en français aussi. Mm. So, oui, you oui. know, kind of having those music, you know, so when I say multi, I really mean that in a lot of senses, you know, not only musical styles, but also languages, instruments Culture. that I feel like, yeah, cultures, absolutely. That, that that's when, uh, you know, sometimes we're at our best when we're not afraid to step out of the box okay. and say like, I'm not just one thing, you know, that I bring a lot to the table. I think I, just to speak to what Peter's saying, a lot of people have an idea of this idea that he has multi of what they think it means. Mm -hmm. But then you meet somebody like Pete where multi doesn't just mean that Oh yeah, I play rock and roll and country. Yeah. <laughs> Where it means I play music from this culture and yeah. this culture. Yeah. And I can bridge them together, or at least I attempt and to. I'm totally yeah. And <laughs> that to me, I think is a very valuable experience to have as a musician and especially as a black musician because sometimes mm -hmm. we get that thing where it's just Categorized. like I said, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Where, yeah. where, oh, black music is this thing mm -hmm. where it's like, well, no, black it music is like all this. of these things. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. When and I went to, when I went to the Congo, um, cause like the first time I went to the Congo, I was like 24. So I never went there when I was young, but I have a lot of family there. And there was this band that was just playing some sukus and I had my trumpet with me. So I just jump up on there and start jamming with them. And it was like one of the most powerful musical experiences of my life. Cause I'm like, this is, this is my people. And like, you know, I'm speaking their language, even yeah, if yeah. I don't speak Lingala, you know? And so, you know, but um, yeah, but we were just playing together. People were dancing and everything. And I think that, yeah, that element of really like, as, yeah, as a black musician, you know, feeling like, you know, kind of this combination of like, I feel very influenced by black American music. And yet I also feel this pull from the motherland. To yeah. 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 So. No, thank you. And one thing, so, and that's actually ties to the next thing I was thinking of was, um, so CC, like, 
how does the music of the past like influence your process now and how do you identify your music so me growing up in the structure of home that i did i had influences very much specifically from gospel and from jazz and like inspirational <laughs> Yes, I, I didn't really get into my bag of like my influences until about 2010, 2009, when I really started like for real, for real, like listening to rap music. I was able to listen to rap music in my house because um, I had my own phone at that point. <laughs> but yeah. man, like for me, as soon as that door opened, I was like running. I'm, I've been like, I, you know, I things I listen to pretty much I will listen to anything once you know what I mm -hmm. mean but like I reach from hip-hop I reach from jazz I reach from you know poetry I reach from soul R&B I listen to rock I listen to metal I listen to EDM I listen to everything I go I try to support every style you know because I my goal is to my answer to my identity is universal I want to reach everybody so I need to know how everybody feels and how everybody expresses themselves because I want I think I want it to be universal because I think in that way, music is that only thing that we have that is, com I know for sure, can talk to everybody. I know it doesn't divide any lines when they all, when we get done with it. You know, we have different influences and different ways that we created instruments based on where we're from, you know, and the sounds. But, like, the goal is to be free and love. Like, so I think that all it all comes out the same. And that's why I love what we do with New Souls. I think it's universal. We can take any song any style, any gig, and make it our own, and make it, and make everybody come together, even if they are coming to learn something new, you know, or just experience something new. I always, that's one compliment I always love to hear from them, like, man, I never heard that song that way, you know, I never felt it that way, I didn't know it had the, you know, I heard the words, but when, when you said it, you know, when you brought your culture to it, you know, you brought your, your, your experience to it, it, it moved me, you know, and I, and I resonated with it. And it's the same song, and I think music's powerful like that. I, I just, I mean, we definitely have, I love that what we do because we all have such interesting backgrounds when we get up there and people request things, like they'll request the metal, you know, song, and they'll think Michael's going to do it, but Brandon's going to do it, <laughs> you know, and they request the pop song, and they're like, oh, CeCe's young, she knows it, but like, no, Michael's going to do that, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's, but it, New Souls especially has been sort of, I, I guess, helped to define with that with me, because they've taught me so much, like, I needed that culturing just because mm -hmm. growing up in my adolescence, I didn't have the chance to experience those things, like, we didn't go to we didn't go out like that you know we were in a very very strict home mm -hmm. and um i just they made me jump in and they made me curious you know and and just like just little things i just love figuring out where every single little detail came from because i think it's universal that's my goal and i want to reach all of those and meet all yeah. of them <laughs> well i know for me like i grew up in north texas but i grew up in predominantly white areas and so you know there's that thing of you know what you know, my my family's from Motown from Detroit, yes. yet I'm um, in Texas, which is, you know, lots of country music and, yeah. you know, and bluegrass and whatever yeah. else. Bluegrass and so and my life was one of, yeah. well, as always, existing in two worlds. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think that's one thing I'm curious of, and if anyone wants to take this, um, this issue of genre and representation of genre, I think country music in particular is one of those that's seen a particular way, but throughout its history. It's been a very jointly formed music type, and I think every music type that's in the United States has been like that. So um, how is representation important to you within those different you know, musical definitions of musical genres? Uh, I'm sorry. Well, when you, think about, when you think about historically, you think about country music, and you think about how it's identified now, when you think country, all you see is like this hillbilly caucasian guy or this type of redneck and if you if you drive lock around illinois you see a lot of your rural areas areas is a lot of country 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 mm. caucasian that's all you see but when i think country i think about like i grew up on i grew up on a farm i cut chickens head off i pick peas i've shook corn i pick cotton because that was where our people people of color were we were the country folks but then they you know we get to a point now where 
You know, can you tell me the last time you saw a black farmer? Right. Because we don't farm anymore. We're thrown into projects or thrown into working, and they pull us out of the fields. But now, the, if you think about the world's richest people, are the people who are the farmers. But they're not people of color. So when you think country music, you always, you know, you have like this stigma, and you go, no, nah, country music goes way back. We're talking pop on them, Big Buck, and yeah. his overalls with the steel pan yes. and the yep. washboard, mm -hmm. and he's sitting on the porch, and how your slave songs turn into um, congregational songs, and then they turn into your country music. You know, They were in the country. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And if you can, Literally in the country. You, yes. can, you can even go as far back to say, you know, the banjo comes from Africa. Oh my goodness, I mean, the, Africa I was trying to like, yeah, do a, yeah. The music, the instruments, and the influence, yeah, yeah it, it, you know it and it and the, when if you want to talk you know you talk specifically about country music i believe that you know everybody will say well charlie pride you know because i'm I, I was born in 73 <laughs> i grew up in the 80s so uh, charlie pride and then nowadays like darius rucker yeah, you know, yeah and they'll yeah. just they'll throw out the one but you know there's the one there's another kid right now that's been huge he's had a couple of country number ones i can't remember his name he's a biracial kid and he's had some issues with how and of course Nas everybody remembers the whole little Nas X thing yeah. that happened a couple of years oh, ago. Oh yes, yes, I, yes. I think that I think that in country music it is a more active erasure, I'll say it out loud, because because of the fact that it has been traditionally this kind of Caucasian bastion. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you really look at it, that's not been the case. Yeah. But they, you know, th there are certain folks you know, there are plenty of folks who don't think like that. And right. some of the larger stars you've heard, especially with what's going on in the world right now, you hear Keith Urban, Brad Paisley, some of the other large country stars are coming out and saying, no, this is not right. This is not how this is supposed to be. Mm. But at the same time, I believe that there is maybe a more silent faction that wishes to keep it that way mm. because they have this false belief that, mm. well, this is all we've got. We've got to hang on to it. <laughs> and that's not really the case yeah. at all. And that's what I was thinking, like, as you were saying it, how, as it goes back to identity and genre, how they've sort of, they keep sifting little, like, they had this rule of this traditional, like, this is like what you're saying. This is yeah. what it is. And like now, I love how they wouldn't let a bunch of people in because they didn't look like this, or yeah. they, even though they might have played their style more naturally because it came from yes. us first. But <laughs> now it's like, oh yeah, but we're willing to let little Nas dress up, you know, and not actually have the real style, but be trendy and sort yeah. of make our, make our, they let, they're like letting a certain culture appropriate them back almost, you know okay. what I mean? Right. To sort okay. of keep their their genre going. Yeah. But like. Then they they would kick a you know a young or, or not book you know a certain artist because of yeah or when you walk in they look at you like oh but he's the best one here you know what I mean and right. it's just like that that's sort of like yeah erasure it's like oh yeah I'm gonna make these new rules I'm gonna put these asterisks underneath what country is or what what we book here you know or what what R and B looks like or like what it sounds like you know and I'm just like. Why not come together and learn some music? Because you never know. Like this guy can say he's he might not even know what his style is. You know what I mean? But coming, I just yeah, I'm tired of the the lines being drawn when it's supposed to be if it's music. It's, <laughs> like yeah, uh, well, yeah. it should be everybody. Like hey, get in here. If you like this guy's from the south too, you probably got some country in him. But let's not you know that judgment and that sort of categorization as soon as you come in the door before you say anything. Yeah. And it, it, it's damaging to the to the growth and the education that could happen. Yeah, I believe for sure. I hate how yeah. it's how trendy has gotten. What pop is? What hip hop what hip is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't can't get me started with, with hip hop. I mean, it's like booking shows. I mean, in Boston, but even out here, it's like as soon as you say you're hip hop, like, yeah, people, people, yeah, people yeah, stop white, yeah. white, white. You, you know, see club owners will stop eye, the like conversation. Yep. <laughs> yeah. And I've had to be, you know, there's times yeah, where I'm like, I'm like, my band is jazz and soul and hip hop. So hip hop is like the afterthought. Just because I know that's the only way I could get my foot in the door. And there's yeah. a problem with that. Yeah. But that's the reality, especially, you know, like in, in the white community, a lot of they yes. think that hip hop consists solely of like what they're hearing on mainstream radio, Most which is a legitimate part of hip hop. And so I'm not here to knock that part of hip hop. No. But they have this conception that's fueled by people who are white people who are making a lot of money off the hip hop industry. Exactly. And they yeah. want people to buy into that image yeah. and they don't want people to get educated. So, yeah, it's like, that's you know, so that's where the problem <laughs> yes. is. And so it's like, because of that, you know, doors, you know, it's like, 
there are people who are making a lot of money off that, but then, uh, you know, booking gigs, there are people who are getting closed yep. out of, of the scene based off of, you know, based off of the name, based off of the genre that they say they play, right? So that's, so that's, that's definitely a problem. Um, but at the same time, like, I'm not going to erase hip hop from what I do because, like, hip hop okay. is an important part of who I am. So it's like, take it or leave it. You yeah. know, if you don't yes. want hip hop in your club, then I don't need to play in your club. True. You right. know, so. I feel very privileged, I can say, to have, I mean, to have Brandon and Michael, you know, and us work together to be able to stay afloat somehow. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. To ride this this wave of, you know, culture change and, like, economy drop and, you know what I mean? All of this because it's like they we just still do have some, like, because of what we've done and how we work. Like, you know, we have this, we've worked to have, you know, claim that respect, you know, as artists who perform styles that aren't generally, you know, in, in a community that's predominantly white, you know, and predominantly pop or predominantly country. You know, to still be able to hang and get that respect, it's it's everything to me to get up there and be able to be myself and sing how I want to sing and sing the songs that mean something to me and not have to go and feel like I have to put on a costume and entertain somebody, yeah. you know, and I just, it means it means everything to me. Like this, they've, they've held me alive by letting us, by not sort of, yeah, censoring our, our culture and our, because I know people who play in bands right now that feel like they, they're just a, you know, accompanist, you know, and they just do it for whatever, and it takes, and it turns it into a chore, and it takes out of the joy and the passion. Yeah. But, no, yeah, I appreciate you. How much time do you have? Well, and I, I was like, I was going to get the last question okay. that I was thinking of. I was about of. to pick back, but go ahead, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. well, yeah. and, and oh, actually, yeah. this all kind of segues to that last question um, for you, Aaron. And so one thing that was really cool uh, a year ago at the 2019 Folk and Roots Festival, Lily Lewis hosted a panel discussion, at, you know, asking a lot of these very questions around um, how a lot of music of folks of color, especially in this country, but I'm sure it happens elsewhere as well, magically get kind of funneled out of the folk, and, you know, the folk and roots genres. Mm. I mean, you know, and how the styles of the, you know, our ancestors, you know, our upbringings, um, somehow just constantly doesn't seem to ever be able to fit, in, especially into folk music. Okay. And I was just wondering, you know, how is this kind of issue um, of how, especially the music industry, um, handles this definition and genre um, impacted your own career, your own music? Well, you know, um, when, I, when I first heard of Folk and Roots Fest, I went to it. And I was like, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> it's it's missing some. When you think, I don't know. I like. It's, I guess it's because of the stigma. Again, when you think folk and roots, you always think again, like <laughs> two guys with like these overalls and these banjos, uh -huh. and one guy's a tooth missing, and <laughs> he's dating his sister, and all that. You know, oh, it's like a stigma, and it's, and it's not that. He, he you have there. to think. I'm sorry. No, it's funny. You, you have to think, and it's not that. <laughs> I apologize, people out there. Um, <laughs> it's not that it goes deeper than that. You know, it goes deeper than that. Um, it's more of a, I think, like I said, folk and roots. I think like gospel, um, spiritual music. I think um, a very phenomenal band here in town, um, and they get they don't get the credit I think they deserve because not from the black community because we tend to get so caught up into genres you know rap hip-hop soul and we forget that we started a, a if not all of this music the majority of this music bones jugs and bones jugs you ever heard of bones yeah, jugs? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. that is our music and yeah. if you go back you can see two brothers playing that music and you know the dance you can see that because that is our music and i talked to cody one time and i said dude I feel connected to that. Why do I feel connected to that? He says, oh, because of such and such, such and such. And he had more knowledge of it than I did. And mm -hmm. I'm black. <laughs> right. So I'm like, like, hey. Hey. <laughs> but, but see, but that's, and that's the thing too. Popular music in this country, mm -hmm. and this is my music teacher coming out, but popular music Bring in it. this country is almost all derived from the blues yes all of it you can even go all the way to hip-hop and say that mm -hmm. so 
when when black folks say you know this is our culture our heritage we're not lying this is not bullshit we are actually this is what it comes from Mm -hmm. and if people try and you know i i very rarely to to most folks credit i very rarely have people kind of push back on that because it's just the truth it's very obvious to see you know when you see those old pictures of louis armstrong and a hot five and all that you know with the Mm -hmm. with the one bass drum and all that stuff i mean that's where jazz comes from yes. it comes from directly from five black guys yes you know i mean and it's like you can't you can't deny it and then you know you go even further and you start talking about charlie Patton and robert johnson and yes. chuck berry yes. uh-huh. you know and then you go even further than that and you start talking about uh uh, uh robert johnson probably or, 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 or well i said robert johnson okay. but, but like even in, into the 60s and things and you have lead belly doing sh- yes. college shows in the okay. early 60s and late 50s yes you know, and college kids freaking out, like mm-hmm. losing their minds over that electricity. Yes. yes. <laughs> so, like in my mind, I can't. I, I, it it does bother me when I see things like folk and roots because most of the time, in my lifetime, until fairly recently, most performers at things like that, unless they were Robert Jr. Lockwood or somebody who was who had a name already. Yeah. You didn't see very many local black folks on shows like that. There you go. That, that can get thank you. That's what I'm trying to say. And that has that has changed, I think, for the better in recent times. Mm-hmm. But it's still like it is still a point of of uh, ponderousness for me, where it's like, yes. really? Because where do you think all that came from? You know, yeah. and I'm not to disavow things like see you folk and roots, which I've actually played, yeah. and which I I think is an excellent thing to have in our city. I don't, mm. I'm not trying to to disparage that at all. I just think that in the general sense, when people think of folk and roots genres, mm-hmm. you know, they're thinking of of Eric Clapton, yeah, instead of instead of yeah, instead of Bucket mm. White or or Robert Jr. Lockwood, yeah, or you know people like that. You know mm. what I, my new favorite thing to say is you can't water down water. <laughs> 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 so I like that. Uh, so yeah, it's like that. Like, but this is the like. Root? Do you know what roots means? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, you know on. what I mean? And it's yeah. like yeah. there's a sort of like the word nomadic to me. Some people immediately think caveman, but yeah. I'm like. No, like in the dirt building a hut, that could be anybody. Mm, right. really, that's you making the best out of what you have in front yeah. of you. You know what I mean? And again, what you made me laugh, you were just making me think about the fact that uh, we were having this conversation yesterday about CMT versus B and B T, and the fact that Beyonce is the only person welcome on CMT, and Justin Timberlake is the only person welcome. That's crazy. How is that even possible? I was like, for what reasons? I'm like, the people in charge of both of them is probably the same person. And (laughs) I'm just like, you know what I mean? But, but because, you know, they're able to, I mean, those both are named, you know, house names, Justin Timberlake and Beyonce, but they're, they're willing to let them represent their culture. You know what I mean? Like, and it's just sort of like black card, white card thing, but. Yeah, no, I mean, at the same time, it's like, thankfully they both represent, you know, like, and they're talented musicians, but only they get in the door. No, yeah, like, you right. know what I mean? That's that's it. Like, that's all we got. Right. And, what? yeah, we fighting. I'm fighting it. I, I, that's all I can say. We was, I was like, cause we were going back and forth about it. And I'm like, we're laughing, but this is sad. <laughs> like, so <laughs> let's do something about it. Yeah, I guess with the CU Folk and Roots Festival, if you don't have that kind of artistry here in town, I guess you do have to go out and pull yeah. people in. Yes. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, like I said, there's, here in town, is, is you have your certain brackets, and you have a lot of great, artists but you'll never know because they don't get the opportunity you know yes, yes. they're at home they're or so on instagram somewhere saying. yeah well i know for me um when i was growing up i became a fan of dave matthews band and mm-hmm. boy yeah. pinsley you know yeah. The, yeah. the fiddler for dave matthews band i'm like there's a there's a popular yeah, yeah. black <laughs> right. you know violinist fiddler exactly. like, and um and i know now like you know the caroline chocolate Chocolate jobs for example Mm, you know meeting dom flemons at the festival last year was just like (sighs) (sighs) you know and i I mean if i could do that with rian and giddens i was like i'd be (laughs) i'd lose my mind i think officially (laughs) but you know but having those heroes Mm. um especially for you know black musicians coming up i think is important and i am so grateful to y'all that y'all are role models for our musicians here in the community and that y'all, I mean, well, heck, half, half y'all are educators. 
<laughs> you know, we're literally. We're all educated yeah. in one way or another. Exactly. We're all educated in one way or another. I'm not going to brag. You know, yeah. no, all y'all educators in some I'm way or another. I'm a street educator. Yeah, yeah. Right, right. Both <laughs> formal and informal yeah. educators. Oh. And I so appreciate yeah. y'all. And was there any final things that anyone wanted to add before... I just want to say shout out to y'all because I'm all fans. Oh, of all yeah. of you. Yeah. you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I mean, you two more specifically in depth and in a mentor so, kind of way as an artist, you know, artist that I see <laughs> out, out here doing their thing, you know, and going through it. You know, me, it was, I, I was going to say earlier, like what Brandon was saying. Yeah, me and Brandon, I walked into a gig. We were the only black people there. Yeah. And, not just, and for me, it wasn't just the black people there. I was the only black woman there. So there yeah. was like oh, wow. weird. Yep. You know, sure. sort of lusty energy going on, you know, or just even weird, like, that's, that's assuming you're not going to be good energy. You know what I mean? Right. It's like, oh, we're not expecting anything, yeah. Yeah. you know, and then uh, we sing and then it's like, oh, my God, I just got to have you, you know, and that, that but they have these. I've, you've been a constant example of how to stay professional. Music, is the, music is the barrier breaker. Like, I, yeah. I play some places with um, my band and we, these are places that I know is a sundown town. Oh yeah, and by the, when I'm walking in there, they're looking at me like, "What are you doing in here, boy?" What are you doing? Yeah. But by the time I'm finished, they're like, "Can I get you a drink?" Yeah, <laughs> I mean, and I got drinks and I'm like, right well, now. At least you know, something. yeah. So, so it, it, it does break the music yes, does, does break the barrier. So you know? like just to. to piggyback on that. So yeah, I'm the old guy in town, I guess. So here's an old story. <laughs> so like, uh, Third Stone, which was Experience. Tom Grassman, Jeff mm. Markland, mm. Dave Ward, and Bryce Johnson. Uh, towards the end of their uh, initial run, Bryce left the band, so they asked me, I was a big fan, they're now friends with all of them, mm -hmm. they're like, we gotta go play this festival in Memphis, Tennessee, can you come sing uh, the show with us? And I'm like, of course, you know, because I, you know, I love yeah, rock, good guys. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, let's go do this. So we go down to the New Daisy Theater and we play the gig, I have a great time, it was a lot of fun. I get done and this dude walks up to me, this is Memphis, Tennessee, dude walks up to me in the tunnel uh, you know, the entry of the theater. Mm -hmm. And he's like, I had no idea y'all could sing like that. And I'm like, okay. Cause well, I'm like sitting there going yeah. like, oh my God, what's about to happen? Uh, yeah. But he was like, he was like, that was, that was great. That was one of the best things I've seen all day. The festival, yeah. this second day of the festival, this, this is one of the best things I've seen. You're awesome. Thank you. I was like, okay then. Yeah, so yeah. when you say, when you say that, that music is the, is the barrier breaker, I have, I believe that oh, yeah. wholeheartedly. Mm -hmm. I've always believed that. It's all, I've always tried to make my life about confounding expectations. It's why, yes. one of the reasons I picked up a guitar. Hmm. So when you say that, mm -hmm. I, I believe it because I've experienced it. I okay. believe. And when you talk about meeting the chocolate drops violinist, uh, Temple of Loman opened for Living Color in 2005 at the camp. Ooh, Living you Color. You want to talk about meeting heroes and like having my head blown. Yeah. <laughs> I was a sophomore in high school. I listened to Cody Prince and Allen and was like, that means I can play hard rock now. Oh my God. Yeah. And then to actually meet those guys, I'm like, tears in my eyes. Yeah. You know, so yeah, I feel you on that. Yeah, okay, yeah. I'll stop talking. <laughs> yeah, I would just add real quick, Deanna. I appreciate that comment too because I think that like for me, you know, like I feel like playing music sometimes I forget how much of a role model I am mm -hmm. in that role very much so. and yeah and I feel like playing trumpet especially trumpet you know trumpet is so rooted in black culture and yet there are young people who think that trumpet is a white instrument because they yep. see like they see a marching band they see a concert band yep. and there have been times where I played you know trumpet at a show and people are like I didn't know you could do that on a trumpet or like black kids come up to me and they're like yeah you know I just started playing the trumpet I think I'm gonna stick with it and to me that's like one of the biggest compliments well you know they're thinking see. about changing the name of jazz they're not mm. calling it i mean because i was reading if you, i mean this this is one of the <laughs> this is a pivotal pillar here in town when it comes to jazz music iron post days always has been mm -hmm. and when you think about jazz music you think about like, again like you just said um with the older um oh, wow. i can't think of the names right now when you think about the older black why am i holding this like i'm at a club um <laughs> <laughs> like the older black gentleman who started jazz that you know you knew all this jazz sound but when you come to the u of i which is one of the number one jazz uh, schools in the central Illinois and the Midwest, and you don't see people of color. Mm -hmm. You only see maybe one or two, and they kind of go like, what happened? Where's the disconnect? Why aren't we gravitating to, I don't want to say our music, but music that is our, in our culture. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I want to thank all y'all so much for, again, you know, being role models in the community, creating spaces for 
you know, music and you know, musicians of color to perform. I mean, it's especially Soul on Sunday, major plug for that. And um, thank you again for joining me for this conversation. I really, really You're appreciate welcome. it. You're welcome. Anytime. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> that was really cool. I could listen to all of them talk all day. Um, I hope you at home are getting something out of this. Um, I think that last segment was a reminder to all of us that if we want to learn, we have to listen. Um, so keep your ears open. Um, hope you've been enjoying the festival. Thanks so much for tuning in. Uh, reminder, we've got all sorts of ways to donate, Omela, Venmo, PayPal, um, and donations are appreciated. Um, we're going to take a little break for a while. We'll be back streaming live at 6 p.m. tonight. See you then.